in me that, that aren't good. We're going to be talking about uh, the character of God. It's moving into uh, a series, a teaching on, on the character of God the next uh, four to six weeks. See how that goes. But 
I love this uh, song that extols, that exalts uh, the name of Jesus. And, and the name of Jesus is above not only every name when it comes to religion, when it comes to uh, a God, because there are other gods, right? There are other idols. But the name of idols in my life that I deal with, the name of um, poor character that I deal with, and the name of others that are, are, are pressing you and I, um, whether in relationship that's difficult, but the name of Jesus, the person of Jesus, and who he is, <clears throat> is above all those names uh, that oppose uh, the name of Jesus within us and, and around us. And uh, so I want to pray uh, using this, this song. Um, and the, and the first verse that you are good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. Lord, thank you that you're always good when there's nothing good about who we are, or how we're living, how we're thinking, this, the stinking thinking, uh, the things in our heart that, that sometimes bubble up, God, that, that just is, is not uh, godly. And I just thank you that we can trust your goodness, your character. And, and, and we do that now. We thank you that we can look to you, God. Be so real in goodness to my brothers and sisters that's joining us as we're gathering together in the name of Jesus. Lord, we focus on your goodness and uh, not on ours. <laughs> not on our goodness, not on our goriness. We focus on you, Lord. We thank you. And you are love, you are love on display for all to see. Lord, thank you that you are love. Who you are is love. And uh, Lord, thank you, God, because of you and your love, uh, you draw us in uh, to loving you. Lord, because you loved first, uh, we, we love you in, in this relationship. Lord, you've not only saved us from sin, from darkness, from ourselves, but you, Lord, help us to fix our eyes on what you've drawn us into, uh, Lord, and, and that's like a covenant, a relationship with you because of who you are in love, in goodness and in love. We thank you. You are life, you are life when, uh, well, you are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. Yes, so we thank you for your light, God, when darkness around us, the, the darkness around us in this nation, in this world, uh, the dark things that happen, the, the evil that uh, is, is taking place in and around us. Lord. We thank you for your light, the light of who you are in truth, the light of who you are in, uh, in everything uh, about you as God. Lord, we thank you when the darkness closes in. And Lord, I pray for just someone out there who needs this prayer, maybe like I do. When the darkness within our own minds, within our own souls, when depression sets, starts to set in discouragement, when we're disheartened and, and there, it's starting to be dark, it's, it's, it's like the clouds rolling in and casting uh, a darkness and dark shadows Lord, we, we just thank you for being light in us, Lord. And we and I just want to say, uh, in the name of Jesus, the name of the light of life and the light of men and women, that the darkness that, that my brother or sister is going through right now, uh, as we're praying right now, for all of us, but Lord in particular, whoever is just really dealing with some dark forces, we say the Lord rebuke you, in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke every spirit that, that, that's pressing in, that's harassing my brother or sister right now. And thank you. Be light that, that pushes back, that dispels the darkness that they're dealing with uh, within. Thank you, God. Lord, uh, we just thank you that your life, Lord, and that your love and that your light, your good, and we thank you. And oh, we're running to your arms. We're running 
into your arms the riches of your love will always be enough even when we run dry uh, when we think we don't have it in us anymore to press on or to press in nothing compares to your embrace because you're the light of the world forever reigns thank you God uh, right now just uh, you know if you're alone or if you're someone but let's let's pray uh, for a nation's pray in regards to the elections local our state and uh, our, our nation and I'm sure uh, I'm sure you are to uh, continuing to pray and and Lord, we just ask God for for Your love and Your light uh, to be manifest through through us, Your church. Lord, that we would not only be active in in our neighborhoods and in our our city or state and our nation by voting, Lord, that we would be active in prayer. Uh, we would be active in trusting You and who You are in the midst of of just the world just being being torn apart uh, so many divides and so many conflicts Lord we thank you God for being love for being light we thank you for who you are uh, in everything that you possess your character is good you are uh, good and great we thank you so we lift up God the uh, our nation our, our state and and we ask that even as uh, as Christians, God, that we would just vote as you lead us to, but we we pray that you would um, install leaders, and we trust you, God. No, no, God, I, we all have different views <laughs> beyond that, and um, I know we have a part in that, but we're just trusting, uh, I trust, and I trust my brothers and sisters do too as well, that you're sovereign, your providence, the the work of your overseeing grace uh, to orchestrate, uh, Lord, all of these vast details, God. Uh, too much for us, too much for any one man. So we trust you as God of this nation, of God of our state, God of our, our, our church and the churches, God of our hearts, Lord, God of this world. For God, you so love the world that you gave. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We pray for one another and those who are dealing with uh, hurts and wounds and illnesses. And, and we just ask God for our brothers and sisters right now. Lord, thank you in the name of Jesus. Uh, for Uncle Bucky, Auntie Pua, Lord, for Lord Joanne. Lord, lift up uh, Auntie Tutu, Patty. And thank you. Strengthen. Lord, thank you. You're strengthening our brother Scott. And thank you for your touch and healing upon those who are dealing with health issues even related to COVID and thank you for your protection upon us and our families in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit we say Amen Amen <clears throat> It's good we can be oh, just caught up in, in, in prayer right just as I know as I it's, it's a sort of a sweet spot for me to have the guitar and just singing and opening the word and singing through scripture and just praying interceding that's that's kind of my um, sweet spot with the with the lord and and uh, love it so sometimes it's good to get carried away as uh, even we get personal and mentioning names right so i just pray that that would be uh, good and real for all of you who are are, are tuning in to be just the presence of the lord and a personableness of the Spirit of God that He leads us, leads, uh, and again, you may be multitasking, whatever you might uh, be doing, but I pray that there would be that, that sweet spiritual personableness of the Lord in you as, as you're praying, pondering, and then as we talk about the Word, that, that the Spirit of the Lord would just lead us um, to become, not only to become more like Jesus, but we just acknowledge the the, the presence of the Lord <clears throat> even now yeah so Lord lead us uh, in this study I'd mentioned last week that oh, I wanted I want us to continue going through Tim Keller's book some some great truths and gems 
uh, in the devotional, uh, navigating uh, God's wisdom for navigating uh, life. And, and so I want to continue, for us to continue that, but I want to segue into uh, some teachings that have to do with the character of God. I'm teaching on Sunday about, uh, well, from Hebrews 13, the benediction, and I talked about six attributes of the Lord that I'll be unpacking on Sunday, so I'm not uh, touching on that so much today, but I, I was really led, uh, as I was just doing some research and study, uh, to look at the, the shorter Westminster's Catechism, and and it's so... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it's it's so deep. There's just so much there. So those of you who are on the email list, uh, you received uh, my outline. So we're going to use that for the next several weeks. Uh, there's some scripture references on there. And by the way, if you haven't received that email, if you're not on the email list or something happened with the email, please get a hold of me so I can put you on the list. All right. Or spread the word if you want someone on the list. But email me, rod at e newhope.org and I'll put you on that list but we'll be going over that particular outline using that as a as a springboard to uh, teachings and talking about God and, and who he is and, and his character and his awesome attributes uh, that he possesses and there's so many but I, I really felt led to use uh, this Westminster's Catechism as I was doing study as I mentioned that for me, it just really drew me in to our our forefathers, at least from the mid 1600s, when that was written. Uh, the Church of England wanted to to ha have more conformity to the Church of Scotland, and so a group of theologians got together in the mid 1600s to come up with a list of questions and then answers uh, from their perspective from from the Word of God to to bring unity to and and that's like our statement of faith right many churches have a statement of faith and we we all agree on on this common sort of statement of faith but the Westminster Westminster's catechism is is so much more exhaustive and and the short one as Compared to the long, there's there's two versions, and and one, the shorter one, is uh, supposedly more for uh, for families and people to use have, have use to teach your children and youth. And while that's exhaustive, there's a longer version that clergy uh, that ministers would use uh, to to study to teach their congregation. So, but they're they're pretty much one and the same with, uh, you know, with, with unity uh, amidst the, the two of them. But I wanted, I wanted to look at this quote. It's at the top of your notes. If you don't have those notes, uh, just follow along. But it's an essay that I found written by Richard Lintz. And it says, The divine attributes manifest in Scripture serve as a powerful reminder that the God of the universe is both radically different from us and also radically committed to us. I thought, oh, I mean, so we receive, right? How radically different that at times, don't you feel like you are different from God? You act different, you are different. We're not God, obviously. But how radically committed uh, He is to us uh, through Jesus. So I love that. The divine attributes manifest in Scripture serve as that powerful reminder that the God of the universe is both radically different from us and radically committed to us. And oh, I love how that doves, dovetails um, our, our need, our want for Him because He's God, He's different, and, and, and we acknowledge Him as God, and He's just radically committed that's covenant right that's uh, what covenant is he's radically uh, committed to us uh, today I want to do more of an overview uh, so I won't be going over all of the uh, again I'm going to unpack the Westminster's Catechism uh, questions 4 and 11 and there's scriptures there there's attributes and there's scriptures there 
and we'll unpack that over the next uh, few weeks. I wanted to give kind of a an intro uh, into this, as I have in regards to, you know, the Westminster's Catechism. But I wanted to read to you uh, scripture in Jeremiah. If you're in, uh, you got have your Bibles. Turn to Jeremiah 29, and it's it's verse seven, verse seven. And when I think of the character of God displayed, it is it is displayed through us as Christians, us His sons and daughters, us His bride, us His church. The character of God uh, is to be uh, form transform us formed in us we're, we're in, made in the image of Christ and then and then we are to be his representation right so I think we all agree on that and when it comes to the character of God as we'll study various character uh, attributes and, and characteristics of God Jeremiah 29 7 uh, says this and I think it ties into sort of what we're going through in various ways uh, our, our national uh, international divide, the wars, there's conflicts, there's racial tensions, there's social issues, political divide like uh, like nobody's business, right? But here Jeremiah uh, is, is writing and he says in verse 7, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. We're, we're in a exile sort of situation, right? When it comes to the world of Egypt around us, if you will. <clears throat> uh, we, we are foreigners. Uh, we're travelers or sojourners, as scripture said, passing through as pilgrims. So this, this world or world uh, system is, is, is not ours. Uh, we are representatives of the image of God uh, to be uh, His light. And amidst of being sort of exiled people, uh, sort of in this world system. So not that we don't take care of the world, we don't steward the world like, oh, I want to get out of this world. No, the world has been gifted to us by God to enjoy, uh, to live in. So we're talking about that spiritual darkness, that world uh, system uh, that's opposing the system and spirit of God, right? Seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. So, three times, right? This, this welfare. Seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile. I, I believe that we can apply this Again, the principle is we seek the welfare of Honolulu. We seek the welfare of Hawaii. We seek the welfare of our nation. We seek uh, the welfare of this city where he's placed us. And that's, that's he's, he's talking to us, the church, the bride, uh, his sons and daughters. And as foreign as we feel from the worldly system, as uh, opposed in uh, lies to truth, right? We are to be the people of truth, walking in truth, learning, growing in truth. And, and there's an opposition to the truth that we're believing. <clears throat> Jesus and the truth of God's word, the standard of God. So there's an opposition there. We're still sent into... Uh, this, this city, to seek its welfare, and then to pray to the Lord on its behalf. So, and then, and here's the benefit, right? So, for in its welfare, you're going to find yours. And you and look up that word welfare, and I did <laughs> look that up. That's shalom. Whoa. Seek the peace of that city, as horrid as it is, as violent, as uh, as dark and ungodly as it is, and this is the kind of situation Israel's in as well, <clears throat> seek the 
Seek the shalom of that city where you're living, that neighborhood, Honolulu. Um, again, the, the, the nation amidst uh, all that we as a nation are going through, with COVID and racial tensions and political situations, etc. We are to seek the peace of the city where I have sent you. So we've got to recognize, look, God, I want to recognize. Hey, Natasha. Oh, I just, I see some names. So, sorry, I don't see everyone's name. I just see one. Uh, or my, my mom's watching. Or who else? Is? Tess, you're out there. That we seek the peace of the place we're at. Amidst the turmoil, uh, the pushback, the darkness, uh, the hardships, the ridicule, uh, even persecution, and we've not seen, I, don't, I haven't seen persecution like, <laughs> like other, other countries, like Christians in other countries have. But amidst our situation, we still seek the peace of that city, of that neighborhood, of that workplace. We seek uh, for the sake of the Lord. So pray to the Lord on its behalf. So it's not just on your behalf. We pray to the Lord on its for, for the peace of God, for the welfare, for the blessing of the Lord on, on everyone, including the enemies, right? Whew. I mean, it's powerful. I'm, I'm there and I'm not. <laughs> it just depends on the day. It depends on how much sleep I got or I, I, I ate right or I exercised. I, it's like I'm there and I'm not. I want to seek peace for those that oppose me, that I have trouble with. And then there's times where I'm like, man, I'm tired. I, I give up already. I mean, look, the reality is I'm, I'm sort of halfway, or it's not really half true. It's just true, right? We deal with that. And I don't mean to make a light of it, but I really believe that if you are at a place of, of, of just growing darkness and just really believing the person of the Lord, um, who he is in character, his goodness, his love, his light, his life uh, would influence, would, would just penetrate your heart by his Holy Spirit. But we're talking about praying for this peace, this shalom, the welfare of the city, um, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. And so, and here's kind of what it's saying, right? For in its welfare, you're going to find your welfare. So in its peace and in its blessing, you will be blessed. So there's, uh, again, that's not the ultimate ulterior motive, but that's the reward uh, while we are living through <clears throat> in, as exiles passing through in this world system. Again, being good stewards of the world, enjoying the world, enjoying life, nature, beauty, etc. I mean, technology of man. I mean, it's a blessing of the Lord, but it's that worldly system, the world of the spirit of darkness. And that's what we oppose. We're, we're passing through uh, growing in the knowledge of who he is in person and in character. And as we continue to pray uh, for our city, for our state, uh, for our nation, and for nations of the world, we pray for peace, for, for its welfare. For in its welfare, God says, look, I'm going to, I'm going to, I believe God's going to provide for, protect. He will be power to to his his church, uh, he will be love and life and goodness uh, to us, his church, as we have that heart to pray for and bless the the welfare, the peace, welfare. Remember, shalom of God. Uh, so I thought, wow, that is so so powerful to seek the unity, and peace. Uh, for our nation, in light of the presidential election, vice presidential, uh, senates, and and then you know for us here locally, again, not to be so politically focused, but we're to be involved and pray for the welfare, the shalom of our city, of our nation, 
That's what I want to encourage us to because it's not only his command. I believe that by uh, the, the character of who God is, he wants to reveal goodness. He wants to reveal goodness. The ones that we, well, I don't like some people and, and there's some people in the workplace or the neighborhood or the family or, or in the nation or there's leadership in the church, uh, wherever it might be. I mean, if you're watching too much news, oh, be careful, don't watch too much news. There's people you're going to like and dislike. But amidst all of that, we pray for the shalom, the welfare of the city. For we're seeking the Lord on their behalf, not just not ours, to be that light, to be His, uh, to be those attributes uh, to the world around us. Oh, I feel like I'm just banging on that same drum. So I think you guys, you guys get it. So I want to pause now and um, and just just add a add a prayer. Father, I just pray that. Uh, that passage, that truth would, would just continue to work in, in, in our hearts, God. And I know even as I unpack it, and I continue for my own self, Lord, I believe, Lord, that you are, are calling me uh, to be a shalom seeker, God, uh, in connection with you and in connection for the place I live, the city, the home. God, help, help, God, for in its peace in its shalom i believe uh, that we will find uh, your peace and your shalom god as the word of god says so thank you and uh, and i just i just speak that over each heart and household in jesus name amen ah oh, so good i want to i'm going to read to you uh th this gives a little context here i just had this note here from a commentary it's uh, by J. Andrew Dearman and, and one of the commentaries that that I study out of exile is not the end of existence as God's people but the beginning of a new phase of relating to God the people are not to rebel against the authority of Babylon because in effect it is the authority of God over them for a prescribed time so again this is a commentator uh, you know giving giving his observation of that cultural and historical setting, right? So the people of, of Israel exiled there. That I, I thought very interesting. Sometimes we think, man, oh, this is the end uh, when it's exiled, when something bad happens, when an ungodly leader gets placed, a, a boss, <laughs> hopefully not in the church, but ooh, when the leader gets, uh, Lord, help me not to be that kind of leader. But you get what I'm saying when we have someone that's influencing us uh, uh, above us that uh, you know we feel like we're, we're being trapped or we're put in bondage uh, it's not the end but it could be a beginning of a new phase and in that case it, it was for the the people of Israel and it uh, he goes on to say uh, the people are not to rebel against the authority but in effect that it's the authority of God prescribed over them more positively, the people are to seek the prosperity of Babylon because it will affect them as well. Most important, they are to pray for their captors. So uh, this, I wanted to read that because I thought, oh, that would, that's a part of that context as I was uh, bringing, you know, trying to bring that scripture to light. Um, if you're just joining us, look at Jeremiah 29.7. That's what we referred to in uh, light of uh, the character of God and us wanting to to live this out for the sake of of pleasing the Lord right but also being the Lord's representative praying for the welfare of the city um, for their behalf uh, because that's what the Lord's calling us to um, all right Whew. yeah so that's I, I wanted to give that that kind of intro. Let me take another five or or, or ten minutes. Uh, as I mentioned, those of you who have the outline, we'll be going through questions four and eleven of this Westminster's Catechism, and it it brings. It was meant to unify or bring more conformity to uh, doctrine, uh, to uh, their not only views of doctrine, but how they would. Uh, view and live out 
uh, the gospel in their time, right in the mid 1600s. So it was to bring sort of conformity for the Church of England to the Church of Scotland, as as I uh, read about. And and so we're going to look at this, and and those particular questions have to do with the attributes of the Lord. And so we'll look at that. But uh, a couple of thoughts as I'm looking at that. Excuse me. Pause. By the way, if you want to get on the email where you receive where you receive that, if you didn't receive that, just email me rod at enewhope.org. Get a hold of me, and then we'll put you on the day church uh, list. All right. So I want to briefly uh, kind of look at this outline. If you don't have it in front of you, you'll you'll understand it. But question four in the Westminster's Catechism. <clears throat> Is by the way, catechism is like the exposition of these doctrines, right? Our journal uh, compilation of what they were uh, to believe out of the scriptures, the the doctrines, and then what they were to teach. So that was uh, what they were working on. So again, a bunch of questions, and I pulled out two of them: questions four and eleven, and then looking at uh, the the answers that are given there. Uh, number four: What is God? Right. Or who, if you want to personalize, so who is God? And again, this isn't all encompassing, but they give uh, God is spirit, he's infinite, he's eternal, he's unchangeable, he's in his being. So I want to go over that when we get to that. Uh, he is wisdom, he is power, he is holiness, he is justice. Right? Justice or righteousness. He is goodness. We sang about that. Uh, he is truth. And we talked about that a little bit. The, the light of truth. And, uh, and, it, and it ends there on that. So that's uh, what we'll, we'll tackle in the next several weeks. Looking at some of those scriptures. And then some, uh, again, there's many other scriptures. So I'll be kind of studying. And, and if you want to do your own, I encourage you to your own personal study on that, on those characteristics, uh, please do so. And I know it'll strengthen our relationship uh, with him, getting to know who he is. Uh, it's, it, yeah, I'll comment on that in just a little bit. Getting to know who he is. So the next question, and we'll cover this a little bit later, but it ties in. So the question has to do with what are God's works of providence, but his works come from uh, who he is, right? In not only his ways, but his person. We see this, God's works of providence are his um, most holy, so he's holy. So the work of holiness, but I want to look at he's holy. He's wise. So again, this couple of, of uh, duplicates. He's powerful. I like that he's preserving. He's a God who preserves uh, he's governing, and uh, and then it that, that ties in with F. Uh, he's governing governing all his creatures and their actions. So uh, it does refer to trusting uh, a bigger God, uh, the sovereignty uh, of the Lord. We use that. I use that a lot. The sovereignty of God that He is uh, omniscient, omnip, omnipotent and omnipresent, right? He's, so he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he's all-present uh, with us. And so that there's, there's uh, some characteristics uh, there. Uh, so we'll, we'll cover uh, those. Who he is as God. I wanted to just touch on that as, as we close. In, in what, what I feel is the culture of uh, who am I? Who do I want to be? Right. Of in the culture of I, 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 me, 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 and again, there's a balance to this because there's a lot of eyes and me's in the Bible. Uh, choices of David, I will worship, and and so God involves us because He created us. But the the thing that I I'm I'm working through is not to get so me and I focused uh, to to try to really examine that along the way and that's every day right but to 
stay God-centered. Uh, who, who are you in me? So it, again, a little twist, maybe a little uh, semantics, but uh, who is God in your life? And what is he doing, right? And so that's what I really feel led. Focus on, on who he is, his character. And yes, that'll uh, we're radically different from him at times. Right? We want to be more like him. But as I read earlier from that scar, we're radically different. And yet he still is radically committed to us amidst the differences, uh, uh, you know, between us. And so... I really am encouraged to just focus on on the character of God, and and we look at who we're not, but we look at who He is, uh, and His greatness. Again, all the attributes of God that just will, I believe, just encourage and strengthen our souls to to want to desire Him, uh, more of Him. Yes, to want to live more like Him, but just to want to be with Him. Right, to have that fellowship, and I believe by the Holy Spirit, that, that's that's the key. That is salvation, <laughs> being saved into a relationship, not just a destination. Okay, now I'm, now I'm preaching. But that all, to me, is wrapped up in us uh, discovering and the journey to uh, who God is and all of His incredible attributes. We don't fully understand all, but we're going to continue growing, getting to know Him and who He is and who He is in us. That's power. All right. Uh, love you guys. Hey, Joanne, how you doing? All right. Oh, I see just several names that kind of scroll up. So, um, And uh, those of you joining, uh, yeah, thanks for joining uh, us today. Have a blessed Wednesday and and if there's any comments, want to comment, prayer requests, or whatever you can share on the comments, please do that. So always go back, look at that, and uh, you have that little virtual fellowship that way. So yeah, please comment if you have any thoughts, questions, uh, any uh, scripture encouragement, prayer requests, all right? So love you guys. Have a blessed Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, and let's continue to grow and getting to know who God is. All right. Love you guys.